Now, I saw a comment not long ago on social media about service valves being fitted on F&E systems or feed and expansion systems. And there was quite a few comments saying that you can put it in. Now, it got me thinking. With the onset of combi boilers, or combi boilers coming into our industry in the early 80s, it's kind of killed off the art of being a central leaching or gas engineer on the installation of F&E systems. So in this video, what I want to do is, I just want to go through the installation of an F&E system, because there seems to be one, a lot of confusion out there, and two, don't seem to be a lot of engineers know how to actually install them because it's something we're not doing on our day-to-day -day working life because we now have combi boilers with sealed systems. So, let's get on with it and see how to install an f and &E system. Now, this is an f and &E system and it's what we call an 181212 system. So that means it's 18 inches across here, 12 inches high and 12 inches wide. And it only needs to be a small system because all it's doing is topping up the central heating system. It's not like a feed system where you would have for a, a cylinder, a vented cylinder, because you would be replacing the water all the time. Once you've filled the system, this is only then going to top up the central heating system because of evaporation. So that's what they look like. Now let's take a look at the installation of this F&E system or feed and expansion system. First of all, what do we sit it on? Well, we're going to sit it on a platform which is going to cover at least two of the rafters. It's going to need to be at least 18 millimeters thick and made of marine ply. We need a gap of 150 mil all the way around the system, not just the front back but the sides as well. So that's what we're going to sit it on and that is to make sure it's secure and it's safe and it's not going to topple over and fall through the ceiling. Also this F&E system cannot be installed higher than the cold water storage system for a vented cylinder and the reason for that is if the coil splits actually in the cylinder what will happen is the pressure will be greater in the cylinder than in the coil so what would happen is the feed system because it's higher a higher head pressure than the F&E it would force the water into the coil from the cylinder and then out through the overflow of the F&E because it would be installed lower. Now if you installed this higher than the actual feed system or the storage system feeding the cylinder then what would happen is the opposite. The water from the central heating will have a higher head pressure in the coil than the cylinder itself and then the central heating water will mix with your bath water or your hot water so you could get your fluid category 3 water mixing with your fluid category 2 water so that could become a potential hazard if you're having a bath or you actually drink the hot water so just remember this system has to be lower or at least on the same level as the storage system for a cylinder. The reason why they say on the same level is because the systems for the storage for the cylinder are a lot bigger and a lot higher. So then they would still have more head pressure than the F&E. Now, next thing is float operated valve. Which float operated valve do we need? Well, we need a BS1212 part two. So that means the water is coming across and out from the top of the valve, not the bottom. If it comes out of the bottom, that's a part one. And you could actually get, in some certain circumstances, you could get back siphonage of the central heating water going back into the cold water. Now you also need a minimum height above the system at this end where the float valve is, 
of 350 millimeters and that is so you've got room to service the float valve now central heating water in a domestic premises is classed under the water regulations as fluid category 3 but in a commercial installation it's classed as a fluid category 4 so that's why we need to make sure we're using air gaps can't put things like double check valves on here it's got to be done with air gaps because it's fluid category 3 not using check valves now <laughs> combi boilers they are filling loops with double check valves so how do they get away with it well it's because it's only when it's filling the system and that's why we need to remove the filling link or put an RPZ valve, reduce pressure zone valve, into the boiler system. You could also use one of these, which is a jet valve, which is an automatic fill valve when you press the button down like that, and it has a pressure reducing valve in there so you can never go above the pressure. And this also has an RPZ valve because it can discharge the water in through here into drain if the pressure on this side is greater than the pressure on this side. So that's why the boilers have filling links where you have to remove them. So that's the float operated valve. Now, how do we set the height of this float operated valve? Well, basically what we do is we set the height of the water so that when it expands this water by 4%, so water will expand from 4 degrees up to 100 degrees by 4%. So we need to allow for that. So we set the height of the water so that when it expands, because you'll need 4% of the total volume of water in the system, so it finishes no less than 25 millimetres lower than our warning pipe or overflow pipe so that's how you would set the height of the water so you would need to know how much water you've got actually going into this uh, your actual central heating system to be able to do this or once your heating system is up and running you have to kind of adjust the float valve to allow for that so you'll be checking once the central heating water is up to temperature that it is at least 25 millimeters lower than our warning pipe or overflow pipe. Next thing is the distance between our water coming in and our warning pipe. There needs to be at least 25 millimeters between those. So when the, if this fails, the water then will go out through the overflow warning pipe and there's no way the water will rise and get into the float operated valve if the water then goes off when you get back siphonage. Now to help this happen that means the warning pipe or the overflow pipe must be the next size larger than the inlet for the float operated valve. So if we've got a 50 millimeter float operated valve we need a three quarter or 22 mil or 90 mil inside diameter overflow pipe. So they are incredibly important when you're setting the heights for your float operated valve and your warning pipe. Now, like I said before, our actual pipe then going down and feeding into the central heating system, we can't put a service valve in there. Now the reason for this is, if you put a service valve into here and somebody closes that service valve off and then there's a fault, and the water comes through the vent pipe back into the central heating system, it could actually boil this system if it's closed off. And because it's made of plastic, it could actually melt it because you could technically have steam coming over here. So the expansion, the 4% is taken up through the cold feed, not through the vent pipe. The vent pipe is like the pressure relief valve on a combi boiler and the cold water feed is like your expansion vessel. So you do not put a service valve into here. Another reason for that is it's only going to be a low volume of water. So if you need to drain this to clean it like it should be done every year, 
then you're only getting rid of a small amount of water not like you would do in a big uh, feed system to a cylinder then you would or you could put isolation valves in there but for an FNE system on the cold water pipe going into the system you do not put a service valve also best practice is to put the outlet in the very bottom of the system not the side and the reason for this is to stop bacterial growth so if you get a load of muck in the bottom of here it could actually be food for bacteria and because this water isn't changed all the time like it would be in a feed system feeding a cylinder we need to allow for that so best practice would be in the very bottom so any debris then would go into the heating system and also if you have put a service valve in here there's every chance it could get blocked up then that's another reason why we don't put a service valve in there so this could go on the outside but no more than 25 mil off the bottom and that's again to stop the bacterial growth now the system itself they are coloured black so algae doesn't grow in the actual system itself but we do need to put insulation jacket right the way around the system including the top it comes with a little jacket so this uh, system when you buy it comes with what's called the old bylaw 30 kit so it comes with the float operated valve it comes with the warning pipe overflow pipe with the dip tube now the reason why we have the dip tube is to stop the system chilling so cold air coming into the system cooling down the water and a potential risk of freezing the water so this needs to be set to a level that when the heating is off and the water has gone down to its lowest level that it still is under the water so that's what this is so also it's screeded it's a screed overflow to stop insects getting in there and also if you have loft insulation in your loft which you should have underneath the platform the insulation should be removed now this will then get the heat from the room below and go to the bottom of the system and that will stop the system freezing as well or help the system from freezing as well so you would have to build your loft insulation up at the sides here but directly under the system under the platform you would leave that with no insulation again to help stopping condensation and stopping it freezing now you would also need to do that as well for a feed system for a vented cylinder now the next thing is because there is a tight fitting lid on here we need a vent so it comes with a vent in the top so that vent then will allow air into the system when the actual heating system is being filled now last thing the vent pipe itself where do we put it and how far into the system do we put it now depends on whether you are putting it over the float valve or over the actual uh, warning pipe overflow pipe it has to be at least two diameters of the internal pipe above this float valve or the overflow pipe and that's this one here so a here vent pipe shall terminate no less than twice the internal diameter above the float valve or the overflow also how high above the system does the vent pipe need to go well it's here so from the finished water level to the top of the pipe a minimum of 450 mil this is to stop pump surge or when the pump comes on pumping over the top so that's my quick look at the installation of a feed and expansion system i class this as a dying art now because not many engineers 
will ever fit these. When I used to work for Manchester City Council in the early 2000s, we were putting these in every day. But obviously now because of sealed systems, it looks like it's become a thing of the past. So that's my look at the installation of these FNE systems. The next video I'm going to look at is the installation of pumps because that also seems to be coming a dire art or is it coming back now because of things like underfloor heating, uh, air source heat pumps because we'll need a pump to be able to pump the water around the system. So hopefully you've liked this video and I'll catch you on the next one guys. Cheers!